Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob Marzullo here from Ram Studio Comics. And today's video, I'm actually just going to ink this uh, face that we drew in the previous video. Somebody had comments that I'd like to see it inked. And quite honestly, I probably shouldn't skip over a bunch of other video requests, but I thought it was a good idea and it was already in front of me. So let's just delve on into it. So I'm obviously using Manga Studio, Clip Studio Paint. Um, and basically what I'm going to start with is just a selection tool. I've blue lined this and I've applied a new layer over top. Actually, let me bring over my layers palette just so you guys can see everything that's going on here. So I've got this set to a blue line. Remember that just by simply clicking up here, you can convert from the pencil sketch to a blue line. You can also change the color to whatever you want by clicking in here. Um, well, I'm actually set to the paint bucket tool, so let me switch. And normally, how do you do that? Click here and you can turn this to whatever color you deem worthy oh man it's easier than this and i don't know why it's not changing let's see here there we go um usually you can click right in here but whatever i don't want it to be red let's just go with blue i like this like kind of blue line effect like that okay so now we're on a floating layer over top let's go ahead and grab this selection tool and what you can do here is you can do the polyline or the freehand. I prefer the freehand. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So the main thing is, is you get in here and you just kind of quickly get all these flood fills in. So I think the trick is, is to not worry about getting right to the edge because some of this you're going to fill in with your brush strokes or a lot of it you are. So what I try to do is stay a little bit away from the edge and not worry too much about you know it being exact so I'll show you what I mean command D to deselect space bar to move the canvas as you go because you want to try to I think this is something you really want to streamline and get done rather quickly and one of the things that I think uh, think helps is if you draw through the areas more quickly so part of it is like getting your hand mechanics right so for instance I do better with downward pulls as I often say on the channel so I'm going to try to do a downward pull through the cheek. I need this to be an opening, so I'm going to cut back through here, back up through here. I'm not going to worry about some of this negative space uh, like the wrinkles because I can fill that in or I can cut that back in with a translucent brush right down here. So back to the selection, space bar to move. I'll say this a couple times and then I'll quit repeating myself. Um, but let's let's get this hole underneath of the jaw. So I'm going to shoot right down through here. And again, I'm going to go through it kind of quickly so that I feel like I get a smoother line. So oftentimes people will comment on the channel here and they say, how do you get clean lines? Well, there's a couple techniques for that. One is speed. So you want to pull through the shape. So if you're stopping abruptly uh, as you go, then the chances are you're going to get more um, mistakes in your line work and more kind of stutter steps going on. So you've got to get like a little bit of confidence with the way that you pull and draw through it. Now, the other thing that's adding to the confidence for me is like I said before, I'm actually going to uh, clean this up with the brush strokes anyways. So I don't need this to be, you know, perfect. And, and like I'll always tell people, get any idea of perfection out of your mind. It doesn't apply to comics. Uh, I don't think it applies to anything really. Perfection is just a fictitious word like a unicorn or a mermaid. Actually, maybe those exist. I don't know. But yeah, so like you just kind of draw through here rather quickly, you know, kind of connect the dots a little bit, but you're trying to get big, you know, pulls of the ink. And that could have been drawn as a line, but I'm just kind of going for it since I'm already here with this tool. But see, I'll just kind of stay in that area of the blue and if you get little artifacts you can barely see it but it's right there uh, it doesn't matter at least for me because I put a uh, Gaussian blur on the end of my inks anyways and I'll show you that as we complete this piece so the other thing you can do if you don't want to keep switching over to your tool hold shift and actually I've already got mine set to auto select which I believe is right here I think that's it yeah, I believe it is. Anyways, you can see the little plus sign there. If that's not on on yours, hold shift and that'll pop up. And what that means is I can now just kind of select more of these areas and not keep jumping back and forth. So let me show you how that works. Because again, every little bit of uh, 
time saving we can create within our work is a, is a good thing. And you see I let go of that selection too early. I'm going to hit Command Z. It'll just release that last one. I'm going to hold R and rotate because I have a little bit more confidence with the pull if I go in a downward motion. So I'm going to utilize that to aid me in this process. So I'll probably do some of these other areas that kind of help me uh, do that as well. So right through here, shape of the eye. And if you don't feel like you can grab the line, just let go of it or you know get to an area you're in control, then let go of it, and then jump back over to an area that you uh, you can confidently make that pass. But you'll see it happens rather quickly. I would probably be going a little bit faster if I wasn't yapping. But then what kind of video would this be if I didn't do any yapping? It would be a very silent video. Nobody wants that, I suppose. All right, hold R, rotate. Love that function. I still remember the days when none of the softwares did that and I was really fighting the whole digital world, digital drawing process, because I can't draw side to side very well on the canvas and so I remember when uh, I want to say Manga Studio the earlier version of this Manga Studio 4 I think was the first one to bring this in and that's actually ultimately what got me hooked on this particular software that and Sketchbook Pro they both introduced it first and then now they've all followed suit even Photoshop uh, finally introduced it which is sweet because it's very necessary, at least for me anyways. So again, just kind of throwing these shapes in, you know, and, and as you do more and more of it, you start to feel a little bit more confident. You start to draw in some of your basic shapes that really could be, again, kind of chiseled out as we jump into the next stage of the inking process. But if you're feeling confident with this, why not just get her done? Um, I still feel like the selection tool could be a tiny bit better in this one. One thing that I like about other selection methods is you can actually stop in the middle of the selection. So Procreate's got a pretty neat one, but uh, I guess I won't talk about that since we're working inside of Manga Studio Clip Studio Paint. But um, it's still a great selection tool. You just have to utilize it a bit differently. This is actually the same way that Photoshop's selection tool works. So this is, in a lot of ways, uh, Manga Studio is very similar to Photoshop. A lot of ways, actually. And a fraction of the cost, so that's always nice. So we're almost there. We'll get like some of these here shapes in here. You see I'm pretty messy with these shapes. And um, I did want to kind of touch on that as we do this, that sometimes it's a really good thing to be uh, a bit messy with your shapes and to practice inking over that. One thing is it saves an abundant amount of time if you get more confident at looking through the work and spotting where you can clean things up, where you can make it better. Uh, it also allows you, when you work over other people's work, to express more of your creative freedom and uh, come up with something nice. You're not so worried about, oh, I can't make out that detail. <laughs> Look at that lump on his head. What did I do there? You're not so worried about all those little details and holding yourself up. You know, you want to get used to just looking past it and saying, okay, how do I how do I fix this? How do I make this look cool? How do I implement my own style? I mean, that's what inking is all about. So it's not just tracing the work, <laughs> which I always think of uh, that movie by Kevin Smith where they talk about tracers. Was that uh, Chasing Amy, I think. But anyways, great movie. Ben Affleck was the bomb in Phantom, Joe. Or wait, that was uh, Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> All great movies. Kevin Smith rocks. But yeah, so, alright, so we got this, and then you can see it's pretty wonky, right? It's like, uh, I don't know if I like that, Rob. You kind of suck at your job. But what happens is we're going to clean this up now. We're going to implement more style over top of this, and we're going to refine this. So one thing i got to check is that my ear is way off. See, I can't. Here, let's check it like this. Let's use the top edge. Oh, look at the difference. The ear needs to be way down here. Make a little mark there. That's embarrassing. I mean, hey, no, nobody's face is entirely symmetrical anyways. But see, I'm going to use the straight edge of the screen 
just real quick just kind of a little cheat there and then see where we're at for symmetry which again it was entirely off but whatever we'll fix it as we go so there's that you'll see those shapes are really crudely thrown in there I also need to adjust the eye it's very different from side to side so I want to correct that as I go but now what I'll do is get in here and start to you know create brush strokes and add in a little bit more detail more style um, and now as far as cross hatching goes there's lots of ways to really approach this one of the comments from the previous video that I wanted to make sure to address in this one was somebody said you know doesn't cross hatching all have to be in the same direction and you know I had to think about that for a bit because I thought man I don't want to misinform anybody but I don't think so um, and, and the reason why I would say I, I would say no I, I would actually have some confidence to say no here because uh, you know there's a lot of styles that I admire where they're they're quite messy and they're all over the place so there are some very uh, constrictive styles or you know um, structured styles where they probably do do that they, they probably have everything kind of flowing together uh, one thing I can say is that the direction it takes like for instance on the brow here it does make sense that you want to curve it with the shape to add form to add you know three-dimensional uh, space to it so in that regard yes but they don't all need to go in that same direction now does it make sense that from the shadow you're going to round up and away to the light source that does make sense uh, but i you know as far as cross hatching as far as uh, you know creating variety to the style i would say that you can kind of really play around with it so what i'm going to do is actually add a layer over top of this just so i can edit if i need to but now i'm just going to focus on adding in some of these lines i'm going to use what i have there as reference but i'm not going to adhere entirely to that so all i'm doing now is focusing on light pressure at the very beginning of the stroke and then pushing into it and applying pressure and there's lots of ways to do this I'm going to show you um, both ways you know pr primarily two ways that I do it but I also vary up the intensity of the lines so that it looks like more uh, variety to the way that I create it so it kind of takes me a little bit of uh, warm-up to get just the lines that I'm looking for forgive me because I realized now that I'm stuffy which I didn't notice that until I started recording funny how that works okay so there's a little bit of cross hatching and kind of something that you want to do I think early on is really check the thickness of the cross hatching and how it how it sits without anything behind it you know so it's got to read well from a distance and one of the things that is kind of a common problem for um, comic artists is is not tightening up the lines enough so notice how like right here there's spaces in between if I was to draw in between these uh, tapered lines there's a thick space in between them that's okay once in a while you definitely see it up here it's really evident right but you're not gonna get as much of a gradation if you do that so just be aware of that uh, I don't think it's a, there's ever a rule that it's got to be this way got to be that way I really don't but at the same time you want to try to practice variations where you eliminate that space and you do it in a, a few different styles um, trying to think people that come to mind that do that really well um, uh, is it Danny Mickey Mickey um, he does some really fantastic ink work uh, bats is another one I have to look up his name but you know I'm sure if you follow comics you know what I'm talking about Scott Williams obviously um, but the ones that I mentioned before they have this nice variety to the um, the way that they condense down the lines and ultimately the shading effects that they get so notice as I applied these I was paying attention more to the the negative space that I was creating or not creating as I brought them together so hopefully that makes sense and then you can do little things like throw a line in the other direction whatever you know but uh, I, I think the main thing is like when you look at like say these what is that five little dashes there <clears throat> excuse me that you don't just say well I gotta try to recreate those five little dashes like that you know you want to add something to it you know these were thrown in quickly just as a 
a placeholder. So then you get in here and you go, well, you know what, maybe it'll look cool if I do these like stretched out commas. Something like this. Or whatever, you know, and maybe a line going across. And sometimes just by getting in there a little bit closer and rotating it, like I said, and then trying something else. So we'll scale the brush down just a little bit and start with a thick uh, kind of pressure and, and let off. Let that taper kind of occur so that actually looks a little more natural. And then again, I keep wanting to throw this little line in there. But you know, all these are just like little style choices. And I think that what happens after a while, you just kind of start getting a feel for what you want to see and you start moving faster and faster like anything else. But one of the things I try to do is make transitions from all this kind of clunky line work. So you can see as we're really close in here, everything is kind of bumpy and, and you know, a bit awkward looking. Uh, and I'm probably too close really, but I just want to soften some of this up. So I might, you know, add in some little lines here. It's all just kind of a transitional effect. So, yeah, but we are too tight. Let me zoom back a little bit. Now, another thing I wanted to make sure to mention is a lot of this is subject to what is the end result of this piece. So, for instance, if this if the end result to this character is a shot that's going to be about this size, and obviously we're all looking at different screens right now, but say it's a very small headshot, then you're going to ink from a lot further back and you're going to use a lot bigger lines and a lot more simplicity is going to be involved. If this is a cover piece, then that's that's kind of why I'm inking so close. I'm actually utilizing this more like it would be a cover piece, you know, maybe just one big headshot on something, but I didn't want to ink from a distance and then, uh, you know, you can't really see any sort of detail and you're wondering why I'm maybe oversimplifying. But the big thing is, is that when you're working on a variety of, of uh, shots within a comic page and, and whatever, uh, is that if it's further away, you're going to simplify. You're going to forego a lot of uh, smaller lines. You're actually going to eliminate some lines that are in the light. And if it's a bigger shot, you're going to use more detail if you want. It depends on your style as well. But So again, kind of pulling into these and thickening it. Uh, thickening them up, forgive me, as I uh, bring them together so that I don't have this overly uh, definable shape. So if I leave enough of these gaps, like you see up here, you're going to see the line that makes the top of this head shape. But if I pull those together, it's going to start to look more like a gradient. So that's really the main thing. And then also focus on doing some that are shorter and more abrupt. So obviously what this does is it shows a different type of shadow. It shows a different kind of abrupt shape by doing that. So just this little difference from the height of these lines or tapered, uh, you know, crosshatch lines, whatever, versus these. I guess it's not crosshatching until you do the opposing line. Um, but the difference is, is the duration or the extension of that line, and it tells a different uh, idea about that shadow. And then these are just to uh, get rid of this abrupt uh, stop, you know, so you kind of soften these up. You see, I do that to a lot of my edges because I just feel like it looks so much better than just leaving a, uh, an abrupt shape there. And sometimes you can just maybe come across here and, you know, you can play around with the way that they space as they widen apart. You can do some more cross hatching again. You also want to play around with the different um, angles, so 45s, 90s, uh, you know, you want these lines to kind of react differently um, as they crisscross. You know, I think that's another variation that improves the style and gives you a lot more uh, area of interest within your work. So all the way to these little dots there, maybe I'll bring some lines this other direction off this shape. Just little things like that. So again, I'm just blending as I do this. I might throw in some bigger ones here. And I love the fact that, especially in Clip Studio Paint, when you hit Command Z, uh, you can go back so many uh, rather quickly because it allows you that experimentation. You know, throw in little hook lines like that. So notice this just comes off straight, but then if I do something like a little hook, 
It looks a little bit more like anatomy, a, a stylized anatomy, of course, but it just, it's just better than all these straight stops everywhere. I think that tends to look boring. And uh, again, you just kind of have to play around with that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my voice there. I guess I had too much coffee, but I love coffee, so that's just going to happen. It's like the jet fuel, baby. Got to have my jet fuel. Okay, so with this area, I might just bring some uh, repetitive straight lines down. So I'll try my best to make these all kind of parallel and equal distance apart, which I pretty much slaughtered that. But, you know, then again, I have to think about, well, even if this is a cover, it's being viewed back here. Yeah, you can see my little mishap there, but I'm going to leave that. Not a big deal. Okay, so now with these ones on the top of the head, I'm going to rotate this. Again, I want to make this holding R to rotate, space to move. And I want to get this position just right so that I can create these lines. Now, in the most comfortable way. But now, what I want to also say right here is keep in mind that sometimes you're seeing me do this stutter step kind of tapering. And I've gotten pretty good at doing that over the years. It's not perfect, but I can usually accomplish it. I actually started doing that back when I used brushes to ink my work on Bristol board. Uh, but now one of the things that I've found digitally that I do more and more is I pull into the line and I apply the pressure like that. So there's just a couple different ways to achieve it. But the one thing I want to make sure to mention is when people say they can't get nice clean lines, they have to really focus. You got to practice this. It's like doing your, your push-ups or whatever, you know, you're working out, you got to do it every day. You got to add a little bit more here and there. Well, you know, and obviously the adding part is when you create more and more work. But the thing is, is that you have to practice this. So just do these shapes on your page and just practice over and over again. And, you know, use your command Z, go back until you start to get a feel for it. And then as you get a feel for it, pick up speed. And you see I'm totally ignoring the, the lines now that were in place because I just don't feel like they were going with the same flow of what I was creating. So I have to ignore that and just do what I feel, uh, you know, is adequate with this. But notice that I just drew into that and it's a consistent pull. Consistent. Consistent. I hope I need to keep saying that. That one wasn't consistent. But I'm slowly adding pressure and I'm trying to not stop. I'm not stuttering and, you know, skipping. I mean, there's a time and a place for all these different effects, but just keep in mind that sometimes consistency and the other thing is sometimes speed. If you do a, a speed line, you're traditionally going to get a smoother line. Now you also got different options inside this program for stabilization. I don't mess with that a whole lot. Uh, I, I think I've gotten to a point where I don't need it as much in this particular software, but it is there. You can play around with those settings, uh, but I just tend to just keep dinking with it and I eventually get it. So over here, back to that kind of stutter step thing, but I'm going from the other direction. So that just is, for me, what feels natural as I do this. And I think my brush is too big, so I use the bracket keys to scale the brush down, soften up this line over here, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's pick another area here. Let's work into the cheek and, you know, kind of uh, fix a lot of what's going on here. So the other thing when working digitally is the distance. So you want to get your distance just right for the lines that you're going to create. So for instance, you guys can't see my hand, unfortunately. I should probably do more of those videos. But basically, from this distance to here on my screen right now is about three quarters of an inch. So what I mean by this is sometimes, depending on how we're pivoting, I'm pivoting off my wrist, or whether or not you're using your wrist or your shoulder to create lines, I'm using my wrist. So I have to make sure that that distance is adequate. So I'm going to scale the screen and I'm going to position the artwork in just the right place in conjunction with my hand so that I can pivot and get all this in one pass. It's going to lend to the line being more um, confident and I'm not going to fight it as much trying to have this land where I need it to land. So again, I kind of want to bring these together so I start to eliminate that, that shape of that previous line. And I think I might go back to my other method here. So 
something like that. And all I'm trying to do here, obviously I'm putting a little bit of curvature with this because I'm trying to get the impression that the shadow is rounding up the side of the cheek. So that this side of the face is in pretty significant shadow. Yeah, and I'm actually going to go back to the other way because it's, especially with these lines over here, it should be a little bit more natural. You see, once I switch from one to the other, I have to practice again just to get my hand feel just right. And I have to ignore those other lines because if I try to hit those every time, I'm going to probably miss. So, and now I'm not getting it. Come on. And all right, so what that tells me is that position wise, this isn't right for me. So I'm going to go back a couple because all these felt a bit awkward. And I'm going to rotate this like this. And now I'll do a downward pull a little bit closer. Maybe scale the brush up just a little. There we go. So again, sometimes it's just getting the mechanics right for where your hand is. Positioning against the screen, stuff like that. Doesn't help that my uh, Cintiq floats in front of me. I need to change the setup because what I actually like to do, what's more comfortable for me, is to actually rest my hand directly on the surface and it's actually more like an easel the way that I work now so I think that slows me down a little bit because uh, you know when I worked traditionally and when I work on my iPad Pro I'm working like a sheet of paper I'm kind of hunched over it like Igor and I'm you know bearing all my weight down upon it so that becomes a you know way to pivot basically where this is more of an easel and I'm kind of floating a little bit more Okay, so now with these lines, I'm going to make these thinner by comparison, just ever so slightly, just so there's a little bit of variation there. Forgive me, because you can probably hear my hard drive just kicking on. It's like recording and drawing at the same time, just every now and then we'll make that sucker, the fans just kick on. Uh, actually, we might as well get these other ones. So another thing I want to do, if you notice here, it's got a pretty good, uh, let me grab a different color because I feel like if I'm explaining something, I should be showing you what I'm talking about. So if you notice right here, if we add a little bit of cross hatching there, it's going to help add another shadow, basically. So if we jump in here now and we add a few more lines, it's going to deepen that tone and it's going to give a, a tighter ridge to the side of that cheek. So if you pull away, you can see there it is a little bit more visibly. So just little things like that uh, kind of go a long ways, I think. And, you know, same thing. I'm going to bring some of those lines back this way. So this is just that little bit of cross hatching. Okay. And then let's go ahead and go back this way. And again, here, I'm just going to make it go with the direction that I think the shadow would be uh, created in. Like this. And maybe just a couple lines like this. Just something. Okay, so now, under this eye... I really don't like these points everywhere. It just looks, I don't know, amateurish or silly. I don't know. It just doesn't look like anatomy. It doesn't feel like skin. So I'm going to break up these lines a bit. I'm actually going to scale my brush down a little bit more. And I'm going to use a little bit tighter line work. And I'm going to try to soften up these edges like that. And I think even on the back of the eye here, let's just rotate this canvas. Space bar to move. And let's bring a few more lines this way.
All right, so let's pan back and see if that reads well. A little bit better. So it's just, again, just trying to soften up those shadows. All right, so now let's get in. The shape of the eye looks pretty wonky. And remember, we can go back with our negative and we can get in some, oh, we gotta go back to this one. Get in some of these um, eye wrinkles. You know, remember to study faces like Clint Eastwood. Man has the best uh, best wrinkles in town, especially in his heyday. He probably has more now, but I like the old school shots of him, like in his westerns and things like that. Great for reference for uh, these kind of looks. I do need to look at the other side as well, but I'm just going to get in some of these little wrinkles. You know, nothing too crazy, but just a little bit of uh, edge lighting. I can do some... You know, some line work going back the other way. Soften up the lines this way as well. Little things like that. Okay, so now let's get this iris in place. And I'm going to cheat, forgive me, but these videos just get so long. I, would, I normally would just do this without cheating. But, like I said, these videos in real time just creep up on us and everybody's saying they like the real time so I'm gonna continue to bring you real time but you know 20 30 minute videos are just crazy on YouTube okay so here's our crazy look of the eye and what I'd like to do here you know we're gonna get a little bit of the light source coming from the one side but I actually what I want to do first is I want to get this iris to have a little bit of, of roundedness to it so, I'll tell you the truth, I'm actually going to copy it right here first, and I'll tell you why here in a second. So hold Alt, drag it over, there's our other copy, our time-saving technique, aka cheating, and, uh, but now I'll render over top. And what this does for us is it gives us the, you know, the time-saving, Command E to merge those together, but now that we render over top, it'll still look like they're not, it's not a cheat there. But what's nice about doing this is you can really check the negative space around the eye this way. So you can find the flaws in the other portions of the eye uh, by doing this. So that's kind of why I wanted to do that. You can see the shapes are pretty, <laughs> pretty strangely different. Um, so now I'm going to rotate this. And I just want to get a little bit of line work here. Nothing too crazy. But Little bit to show the round over now obviously when somebody comes back to color this if you're handing it off to a colorist you don't really need all this but if it, again if it's a close-up shot then maybe you know you just have to decide that for yourself is this a you know something where you're gonna see all this glorious detail then maybe you do want to introduce this but if it's a far off shot let the colorist handle it and no one's gonna get this close to the work and appreciate all this for the most part. I think I read somewhere that on average somebody looks at a comic panel for about eight seconds. So uh, so yeah, you might want to keep that in mind as you're pouring your heart and soul into all these little details that it might only get viewed for about eight seconds. Can you imagine? Little glares on the eyes. Yeah, good enough. I mean, Definitely looks crazy, doesn't he? That's what we want, though. Okay, so now let's jump over here and do some more of this. So again, try to fight the urge to think that you got to recreate what's in front of you. You want to add style to it. You want to, you know, change it up a bit. Experiment a little bit. So I'm going to throw these lines in. I'm going to bring some heavier lines off of this. like that and there's none here but let's add some let's break that up this I want to scale the brush down and I want these lines to be like kind of thinner scratchier lines so I'm going to try to draw these very thin call these like angel hairs and um, I think this is another thing that's important too 
because when you create this line variation, you're you're just creating more shadows. So you don't have to think like all these need to be so similar because it's not going to read well. I think that it reads better when you introduce more variation to the lines. It gives you basically more gradients to work with. But you got to remember back in the day when people didn't do it like this, they were using zipatones. I know people are probably like, "What, dude? How old are you?" Um, I assure you, I never used zipatones. I just know what they are, but. But I'm a pretty old guy. I'm not going to say how, how old because my subscriber rate will probably just drop. This dude's ancient. I'm not following him. I assure you, I'll be around for a long, long time. Because I do my push ups and I eat my spinach. Okay, anyways. So yeah, so there's some lines there. I do like how these ones are like just pretty basic, but they're, you know, they start to separate as they get away from this shape. So I'll do that. I actually don't like that little dot at the end. Thought I would, but I don't. And I think I'm going to add to this and bring these lines down a little bit like this. So again, just little tiny little style choices, nothing groundbreaking here, nothing too advanced, just trying to mix it up as I go. And another one that's important to do is these, I think I've already mentioned it, but these just these little roundovers. So again, I don't want this area of the face to look like there's a shadow that goes way up into the cheek. I just want to bring out this little pocket of skin and these little roundovers, these little uh, spikes are perfect for that. I probably could have went the other way with them too, like this way, but yeah, we'll just leave it. And then here I might bring some back this way because it'll help to uh, define this area of skin that we that we get on this character. See that right there? So I might just throw that line in there. Let's see if it reads well. Nah, I don't like it. See how quick I change things? Don't know until you see it, folks. Okay, so now the chin. Let's rotate this. So again, this round over that we get, bring these lines together. And I'm actually just going to let some of these be a bit more messy than I typically would because I think we need to start wrapping it up. And, you know, it might be a good example of how you don't need all these lines to be so clean and pristine. Uh, it's just shading. So I think that, you know, if they're close, if they're doing the job of making it look shaded, then we're good. They don't need to be so designed. Especially for cross hatching, because a lot of them you start to cover it up with the cross hatching. So let's bring some this way now. So just stick to thin. And I think that when you um, when you're trying to tighten up the work, or for instance, if you're trying to make this area of the chin not have that definable line that I was talking about. It's more important that you bring these together like this, especially if they're going to be the only lines. But if they're not, if you're going to cross hatch anyways, some of this gets covered up with the cross hatch. So something like that. We can bring a line across here like that. Okay, and the chin looks awfully wide, doesn't it? I think I brought these too far back, but. And we'll just roll with it. So 
a couple of these little lines. And now for this little pocket here. And let's go ahead and try to bring these lines wider as they come apart and thinner. And then cross hatch and we'll do the same thing. And let's soften all this up and introduce a shadow right here. And even a little bit under the lip here. So you see none of that was really there. I'm just kind of making a executive decision here about the, the shading. Yeah, I think that that reads better. And we got to remember too, it looks uh, like this chin is way smaller because it's not in light. But if we need it to, if we feel like it's going to add to it, let's actually just merge all this down to make it easier. I can just take a negative line and do something like this and help uh, paint that picture. But I'll do that after we got more of this in place. And I want to do that from a distance. So let's get this little hook line in there with a few little lines to break it up okay and then we're getting there so now let's get the this uh, part of the neck in place there's that and we need the cross hatching here So for these, I'm just going to do these quick lines. Remember that that speed will generally give you a cleaner line. And also check the distance. I need to be a little bit further away from this. And maybe scale the brush up one more time. Okay. Over here, these lines appear a little bigger, so let's do that. A little bit thicker lines now another wonderful cheat about digital besides custom brushes which I have on my gum road by the way for inking that you know kind of do some of this work for you but uh, this video is not about that but but the other neat little cheat is that as you do some of this if you get some areas that you really like and you really could see yourself reusing uh, you can just save this out. You can save a layer. You can do whatever you need to in that regard. And uh, so you can literally just grab pieces of this. And, you know, if it's a repetitive shading that you're doing anyways, what's what's wrong with it? And it's your artwork. So I'm always a fan of recycling my own artwork. As long as it doesn't hurt the art piece. As long as it's not something so redundant that it's very apparent. But yeah, you can just simply save portions of this, especially these patterns right here, because again, they're just kind of so basic. You know, they're just simple overlapping cross hatching, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but I try to redraw as much as I can because I also want to strengthen my ability just to do do that. So, okay, so now on this side of the face, I'm gonna actually taper these lines a little bit, so thick to thin. Try to keep them relatively tight together. Now the other thing is too, once you do this, you start to warm up and the lines start to come out a bit easier. So it's just a matter of getting your hand, uh, you know, feeling right. And then for here, I'm actually going to do the same thing, but I'm going to purposely try to stop these before the edge. Just so it reads a tiny bit differently than that other area of the face. So I would perceive that this side is getting maybe just a little bit more light. It's higher up on the face. So for me to do that, I'm just going to try to make it read like that just by doing something as simple as that. Okay. So now under the lip here. Now I'm sure there's a lot more science that goes into this stuff and 
you know, why you do this there and why you do that there. Uh, but I'm just being completely honest. This is about the extent of my thought process as I do this. You know, and who knows, maybe as I do this for a few more years, all these other ideas will present themselves. But for now, this is just kind of the, the way that I do it. And again, remember, if you can chisel these feature lines as you get in here, do so. You know, so just change the shapes a little bit. Uh, up until now, I've been letting the cross hatching kind of do that for me. But there are some areas like, you know, the mouth here looks a bit strange. So you can just kind of re-edge that out with the brush before you get into the cross hatching. Bring this over to here. Okay, and then let's see. What else can we do here? Let's, uh, let's bring a couple lines into here. Something like that. And then these ones we can go straight down just to create that little bit of variation there. And back over this way. Okay, let's go ahead and check this from a distance now and see what we got. It's starting to come together. That bottom lip looks weird. almost looks like too puckered down or something. So let me try to correct that a little bit. Let's, uh, let's just bring this line, the shadow, right up. And let's go ahead and bring some little, little lines like this. I don't know if I want to introduce these wrinkles, you know, like you get those little wrinkles in the lip. I don't know. I don't think those read well. Let's try just putting some of this side of the lip in shadow. Almost flattens it out though, doesn't it? So sometimes I like to add some of this line work from a distance, but I don't know what it is. That's just not reading well to me. Let's bring the shadow right over. Yeah, maybe that's better. It just looks weird that that whole lip would be in uh in light when so much of the side of the face here is in shadow so i'm just going to kind of change that just a little bit and what else got the ear here put some line work right here probably soften up this shape yeah and so on and so forth i mean that's really kind of the approach and I would just kind of keep playing with it, adding little bits here and there. Now again, if this was anything but a cover piece, it would be more than adequate. I don't think there would be any need to uh, add nearly as much as we've done here. Uh, but I figured I would give you, you know, more rather than less and let you decide on what portions would be uh, 
good for your workflow. But, you know, this is probably the stage where I'd come back and just keep adding tiny little, like, uh, thinner lines. And I would even do this on a separate layer so that I could really gauge whether or not these are good decisions. So, for instance, I've got enough of that kind of thicker cross-hatching going on. But it doesn't mean I couldn't go back and add some thinner kind of shadowing just to give it another level of depth. So I might... I'll just show you what I mean here. I'll just add these tinier little lines here and there. You can see I'm working from a distance, so I'm not too worried about these being nearly as clean. But they're thinner, so they're not as, as pronounced and kind of in your face, basically. Like I still want to shade some of this lip that's bugging me. You know, some of this in the eyes, so if I want to continue to bring these eyes out, these tiny little lines can work well for that. But yeah, it's basically just overlapping and, you know, having fun with it. Trying different things and seeing what you can come up with. Experimentation. Trying new things. That's how you develop your style. Now, as far as the stuff in the background, too, this could turn into anything. So I guess I'll explain that and we'll call this one done. Uh, so for this background... You could basically say that this is just a gradient, it's real messy and a lot to interpretation there. So what we could do here is say, well, I want this to be a, a lot more in shadow than this other side of the head. So let's just say that for this side, we're going to do a lot of like little overlapping lines. You can vary up the in intensity of them. like that. Let's increase the brush size, come back the other direction. Actually, let's start very tight at the bottom here. So again, we want to think about the distance apart and have that separate as they come up. So it's part of that variation that you're looking for. And let's say we went crisscross up and down. We haven't went side to side, so let's rotate this again. We kind of went side to side, but it was on a slight angle. So we'll do that again. I'm still making these lines pretty heavy, but now as I get up here, I'm going to have them separate and get thinner. Just like that. Kind of move them side to side a little bit. So you see, there's no exact rhyme or reason. It's not something that's got to be perfectly designed. I mean, there's a little design going on there, but not much. And uh, you can kind of keep doing that. You really don't, I mean, I guess you want to think about the way they're crisscrossing. Like we've got these little diamonds kind of going on. But I also feel like I need to add one more layer. I guess what I could do is take some real thin lines now and just go right through the whole thing if I want to shade this down one more time. So I guess I'm trying to pay attention more to the gradient that it's creating than anything else so something like that and then on this side if we wanted to add something just because there's a few there we just keep these very light very airy so pretty simple i mean not rocket science here right so uh, basically now what i'd love to know is what you guys thought of the video in the comment section below do you have any questions that I can help you with? Is there anything that I didn't cover in this particular one? Oh, and let's finish this off by showing you the Gaussian blur effect that I would do. Uh, but yeah, make sure to comment. Let me know what you think, what else you'd like to see in the future, and I'll make sure to get that on the schedule. I'll be doing more shading videos because I think on this channel, we've covered a lot of things, but we need to get more into dynamic uh, light and shade 
uh, because it's so impactful for comics and I actually haven't done enough on that subject. So we'll be doing more of that. Uh, so yeah, so the other thing is this. Once you get this to a level you like with all these little fancy shade lines that you want to see and you know you get it to a level where you're ready to call it done. If you zoom up on this, you're generally going to notice, I mean it's pretty wonky real close up, and you're generally going to notice that it's pretty hard edge. And I don't like that for my inks. Uh, so what I do is I create a copy of this, drag it over like that. I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, set it to whatever variable. This number is going to slide based upon how big the artwork is. So let's say 6 for now. Let's get rid of that other layer. Now you can see that's actually a, probably a little bit too much. Again, it's going to depend upon your output. So let's go back. Let's do that again. Blur, Gaussian Blur. Let's bring that down to about a 3. But what I want is just soft enough, eh, maybe a 4. I want it just soft enough where it doesn't look so digital. Let's see what that looks like. So now when you zoom in, the inks just have a little bit more of a blur to them, a little bit less overly rigid, I guess, is the way I look at it. So play around with that, see if that helps for the output of your artwork. Uh, I think it adds a lot to it. And again, just remember that this is just one particular approach and there's just lots of experimentation that should go on. And play around with it, have fun with it. But again, let me know what you think and what else you'd like to see. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.